Yo, what's going on YouTube family? It's your man Jeremy Dudu here. And in this video, I wanted to give you guys a quick little life update because I haven't posted a, a video in a minute. And that life update is that I recently got a new job at LinkedIn as a product designer. I'm excited to be working on this team because I feel like the company's mission and my personal mission align, right? LinkedIn's mission is to help provide economic opportunities to people around the world. And my personal mission is to help black and brown designers and people from non-traditional backgrounds understand what it takes to get into the design field. I wanted to thank every one of you that follow me on this channel um, because I feel like through starting this channel, I've been able to develop my voice as a designer. I feel like it's, it's super important that you have a perspective, right? And before uh, starting this channel, as a person of color in this industry, it was really hard for me to understand the value that I brought to the field, right? Because I didn't see a lot of people like myself and I come from a non-traditional background, you know, and I had a lot of um, imposter syndrome uh, starting this channel and coming into this industry because I didn't go to uh, design school. I don't have a typical design education, right? But what I've learned through this YouTube channel is that a lot of my upbringing and my story, you know, can relate to the journey that you guys are going through, right? And if we want to create a more equitable and inclusive design industry, I feel like we have to understand the stories and the, uh, the journeys of people who haven't gone the traditional route. You know, anytime I've shared with companies that I've interviewed with, like, yo, I have this YouTube channel, I'm trying to connect uh, these people to these companies or these industries, it's only made me look better, right? So, um, you know, I feel like what I've learned is that when you are trying to do something good in the world, there are people who might believe in that mission and want to support you, not just in your personal life, but also in your professional life. So this channel has brought me a lot of opportunities and, and it's been an enriching experience to learn um, from your life. And um, it, it, it definitely uh, makes me a much happier person spiritually and in every sense of the word. So I, I super appreciate every single one of you. Um, but there were some lessons that I've learned uh, over the past several months while I was interviewing with a, a ton of different companies. So I wanted to share a few of those lessons because I feel like oftentimes uh, people put it out there like, yo, I got this new job and they want a lot of congratulations. But, you know, for people of color, I feel like, you know, uh, for a lot of us, this is our first foray into working with corporate America and working in, working in these spaces. So let me tell y'all a really stupid thing that I did. So around June, I started looking for a new role and my former mentor, he reached out to me and I'm not going to say the name of the company that he works at, but he was like, yo, Jeremy, um, you know, we got a few open design roles and I think that you would love working here because he, he loved it. He was in that first month in that honeymoon phase and he was like, yo, it's popping here. Um, and so he reached out to me and um, I got in touch with the recruiter, talked to six different folks who were on the leadership team and they were trying to make a determination of where I would fit in the company. One of those hiring managers uh, towards the end of that process, I think it was like the sixth person that I spoke with, he gave me a verbal offer and he was like, do you have any concerns? Uh, is there anything that you, uh, you know, that you're excited about? And I told him and it was basically like he agreed to hiring me. Right. Um, and so I went back to my manager at Salesforce a few days later and I was like, yo, man, I'm out. And he was like, what? What are you, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, I, I got uh, an offer from another company and, you know, 
I'm done. And he was like, he was like, yo, like, this is really confusing. Like, did you, uh, you never told us about this. You never said that you were leaving. And I was like, yeah, but I got another offer. You know, he was really shocked. And a few days after that, the recruiting manager reached back out to me and she was like, yo, Jeremy, unfortunately, you didn't get any offer at the company. And I was like, what? Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Like I was kind of pissed off because I, I had gotten a verbal offer, but I didn't get anything in writing, right? So that was the lesson for me is to never ever rely on a verbal commitment from somebody. You have to understand the position that's being offered to you. You need to see the title, right? You need to see how much you're earning. You, you need that paperwork, man. So don't let your ego get the best of you, you know, when people are trying to hype you up. I think another thing that I learned uh, after the, the first four months that I was interviewing is that, you know, you're going to get frustrated. You know, I, I had rejections coming in left and right through emails and phone calls and recruiting managers telling me, yo, the, the hiring manager thought that you could have done this better. And I started to get really down on myself and, and have these negative thought patterns go through my mind because nothing was working out, you know. So I had a few different options that I thought about, right? I, I thought that, okay, I might be able to work at a startup. I might be able to open my own business as a freelancer or, you know, I might be able to take a sabbatical. And I seriously thought about all these three different options and I was basically open to all of them, right? Because there was a lot going on in my family. There was a lot of death going on. There was a lot of work that I was doing in my current role, right? So I felt really, you know, just burnt out at my wit's end and um, wasn't sure, wasn't clear about what I was going to do. And, you know, I, I think that I became open minded to uh, reaching out for help. So I reached out to a few different mentors who had started their own businesses in the past and what they had, um, I, I think the themes that they hit on were that before they opened their businesses, they felt like they had to deal with all those internal emotions that they were dealing with, right? The, the internal judgments, the fears, the uh, self-doubts, right? Because as a business owner, you have nobody to run to. <laughs> Your bills have to be paid still, right? You, have, you might have to employ um, other people who are looking to you for leadership, right? So you have to kind of mitigate all those um, voices that might be going on in your head when they get you down. So that was that, that was eye-opening for me and I felt like I could reflect based off of their personal stories. I, I went on a retreat trip to Joshua Tree with a buddy of mine from college and I felt like that was really the turning point for me because um, he told me a story about the, the last words that his father said before he passed away. He felt like he, he, he wished that he would, ex he would have expressed himself more during this lifetime. And he said that on his deathbed. And that really hit me because, you know, I, I, he had told me stories about his father. His father was very successful. Uh, he was known throughout the community. He made a lot of money. But yet he felt like as a black man that he didn't express himself enough. Right. And when he said that, that the reason that that hit me is because I know so many uh, people of color who have told me about the uh, situation where they feel like they have to put on masks at work. Right. They have to be one certain kind of way at work and another kind of way at home. And I was like, yo, if nothing's working out for me, applying to these different jobs and I need to start my own business. I'm going to do it on my own principles. I'm going to ex express myself the way that I want to express myself. I'm not holding back, right? If it's my business, I'm going to run it how I want to run it. And even when you think about applying for a job, right, you are branding yourself, you're presenting yourself and selling yourself in a certain way. So I came back to LA with a renewed spirit and I was like, whatever I'm doing now is not working. <laughs> I need to do something else. And what I did was I started 
talking about my personal story and how that related to design because what I was doing before I went to Joshua Tree was I was kind of talking myself down during these interviews saying that you know I didn't go to design school um, so there's a lot that I need to learn I was kind of playing myself down rather than playing myself up correction that I made was that I started empowering myself and, and selling myself on you know I might not have went to design school but I grew up with a, a grandmother who taught me all about love and, and through love and empathy you know I feel like I've tried to express that as a designer on the teams that I work on and that has fostered an environment of collaboration and creativity because through empathy and understanding how people see design you can make them comfortable enough to create an environment where they feel free to openly express their ideas and opinions many times people they don't really understand how to communicate what they want or what they need or, or why they think the way that they do. So as a designer, that is a gift. And that's a gift that I learned through my grandmother, through my mom, <laughs> through, you know, people who are not in the design industry at all. Me talking about that uh, in interviews and when I was talking to these different startups, that really changed the game for me. I, all of a sudden I started getting offers to do consulting, to uh, work at a large company. I, I, I started getting these opportunities in front of me that I wasn't getting before I went to Joshua Tree, right? Just based on telling my own personal story and giving my perspective on design. Eventually I really had to ask myself, what do I really want to do? Because all the opportunities were in front of me. I could have taken a sabbatical, I could have um, started my own business, I could have been a consultant and I really had to understand and, and think about what do I want for my family, what do I want for myself in the next three to five years. I just wanted to give you guys some insight and, and background into what the, the last several months were like and the lessons that I've learned, you know, um, it, it, so hopefully, you know, there was, there was a, a, a little nugget or two that you could take away from my personal story. If there's another thing that I can leave you guys with is to uh, never settle. You know, if you're unhappy with where you're at or something just doesn't feel right, always be open to new experiences. You know, I feel like sometimes we, we tell ourselves that we're not ready to do something. When you're making a transition into design, it's a scary thing to do, right? Because you're not sure where it's going to go, where it's going to lead, um, and a design career can be a long, windy road because the industry continues to, continues to develop, and we don't know what the next five years are, are going to be, right, with this metaverse thing or, you know, just AI uh, uh, continuing to develop. So, you know, I feel like it, it always helps to help, it, it always helps to uh, hear somebody else's story and how they approach certain situations. When it comes to dealing with rejection, um, there are gonna be people who support you, there's gonna be people who try to deter you from that vision. But what I also have learned is that if a company uh, doesn't hire you, it's probably for the best, right? If you weren't feeling the vibes in that interview uh, and you weren't connecting with the, the hiring managers or the folks that you spoke with, and that energy and, and, and um, synchronicity isn't there. Sometimes it feels right, sometimes it doesn't, but you have to pay attention when it doesn't feel right. All right, pay attention to that energy because it's probably somewhere that you don't want to work anyway. God always has a bigger vision for us and, and wants to lead us in a direction where we're not serving ourselves, but we're also serving Him, right? So eventually, uh, something's gonna work out for you if you're struggling. You know, I, I was struggling for maybe four or five months and, and oftentimes people tell me, how long does it take to get a job? You know, if you're starting out, it is hard. But if you are in the industry already, it is also hard. There's more competition out there. Uh, there's a lot of subjectivity when it comes to what a good designer is. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna end it here. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope that you and your family are doing well. Uh, if the video did help, you already know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.